Church in Mount Vernon on the second Sunday of Advent. What an awesome opportunity to worship the Lord, our Savior. So the Agape Center, our confirmation students have been hard at work raising money and uh, a clothing drive. So those are some pictures from the clothing drive. We had two, you'll see it when you walk out that way, we've had two huge loads. We already delivered one. And uh, our church has been so generous that the, the need has... The supply has gone out to other refugee families in the Cedar Rapids area. So originally there's 12 refugee families, but we've had so much clothes that we're able to expand that a little bit. And the kids have also raised about $250 that will go directly towards the Agape Center, who helps refugees learn English and take driving lessons and things like that. With that, I invite the Morts to come forward for the Advent. The prophet Isaiah wrote, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And John, the messenger of God, proclaimed to all the people who came to him in the wilderness that they must repent of their sins and be baptized. Many people heard his message, repented, and were baptized in the river Jordan. It has become our custom to prepare for the birth of the Messiah by decorating our cities and homes, hanging lights inside and out, singing Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and measuring the quality of our Christmas morning by the number of gifts we receive. As we light this second candle in preparation for the coming of the Messiah, perhaps we need to listen again to John the Baptizer's message Preparing the way of the Lord. Make straight the paths, repent of your sins, be baptized, and live holy lives devoted to God. Come, Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. Prayer. Holy God, we long for your peace and trust in your promise. We hear your call to turn forward to you, to change our lives and welcome you. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace that our worship together may open us to the challenge of your dream of wholeness for all. In the name of the one who is coming, we pray. Amen. So let's come together as a body of Christ in prayer. So God, you heard those prayer requests. There's some difficult things in there. So we ask for healing. We ask for more glimpses of joy. We ask that you be present as we all work through pain and suffering and emotions in this holiday season. For those who are about to celebrate Christmas without one of their loved ones. For those of us who continue to have a hole in our heart, for those who have passed in previous years, we ask that you be with us. We ask for some supernatural peace that throughout the mess and the muck of this world, we may see the light of Christ. We may feel the light of Christ in the darkness. We also lift up to you our joys. In thanksgiving and praise, that we Continue to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ this Christmas season and in the future, that we may have hope of complete reconciliation, complete redemption, complete salvation. That the good news of Jesus Christ might not be lost on us. That we feel this hope, this 
despite our grief, despite the busyness of the world, and we earnestly pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. This time I invite Leanne to come forward and any kids that would like to come forward for this morning's message. Good morning. I like that hat. It's December. December is busy, crazy, fun, exciting. But it's a time where we get a little bit caught up in all the stuff going on, all the things that can kind of weigh us down and make us a little bit stressed out. So I am just as guilty as that. And I, I have a really big to-do list. And I have a lot of people that I need to send some messages to. Like, I need to tell my husband that I'm going to let him pick out some angel tree gifts, so I'm going to send those to him, and I need to tell my kids to get their rooms cleaned up for the holidays, and I need to tell my sisters what's going to work for um, holiday things, and I need to tell the parents of my students. I have all these things, and luckily, I can do most of that right from my phone. I can send all kinds of messages. I can send them on, um, on uh, just like text messages and Facebook messages and tweets and emails. I can send all kinds of messages. But I have so many, I was wondering if you guys could all pull your phones out and if I just spread these jobs out, this would go a lot faster. So can you pull your phones out, please? Do you guys not have phones? One. I have one helper up here. Does anybody else have phones? Oh, but not here. So not up front here. Well, so you guys are just no help? You can't do, you can't send messages or give messages? Do little. Do little. Oh, but I so disagree. I do think I would disagree with that, Miss Hannah. So, you know what? Before I had a phone, how do you think I gave people messages? Talk to them. I did talk to them, and I did something else too, in case they would forget, because sometimes it's hard to remember those messages. Wrote it on their hand. You could write it on their hand. We could use some. No, maybe we could use something else. Maybe. Write a note. Write a note. We could write a note. Think about that. And actually, I know you guys still do that because. I am lucky enough to get little notes sometimes from little people. Look inside my messages can. I brought you a message today. I know. I'm going to let you pick one out of there. I'm going to let you open it up. Because God told me, you know what? We're going to help you with that. You will. So, God told me that some of you might need to remember some things. Oh, I gotta get down here, Miss Eleanor. Ben can help you read yours, or I will help you read yours. Now open it up. Can you open it up? Oh, we're gonna go down. We're gonna see what kind of messages are really, really important for you to keep and remember. What's your stuff? God loves you. You will forgive me. You are talented. You are loved. 
You are special. You are amazing. He just loves you.
The fact that Jesus came to this world to live in this world and that he loved this girl so much that he died for her sins changed her. All of a sudden, her heart was strangely warmed in John Wesley's word, and she believed. She had no other family who knew Christ. She had no other connections to the Christian church in China. But all of a sudden, she broke down in tears as she heard the story of Christ, shared by a man who didn't even believe himself, and she became a believer. So I wonder, who has shared the message of Christ with you? Why is it that you're in this church today? Why is it that you're sitting in these pews? Who were the messengers in your life that shared this great story, that have called you to prepare your way, your heart, for the Lord? Did you hear the story a few times before you actually came to believe it yourself? Did you have to dig and research and look at history and science? Did you have to figure out if it would make sense to you? Or did it just hit you, strike you one day, and all of a sudden you melted, knowing that you needed Christ as your Savior and Lord? Here in the scripture, it begins in the most beautiful way by saying, the beginning of the good news. Those are the first few words. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now isn't it good news that Jesus is coming? That we can expect our Messiah to show up. And that he's going to come again to bring us home to glory. And he calls us to himself. He loves you. He wants to heal the brokenhearted. We shared this morning some really difficult things happening in our communities. In the communities of our loved ones. We've talked, we've heard about death, we've heard about grief, we've heard about even trials and the difficult accusations that have been made and the fight that has to be made. And here we have a Messiah, a Lord, who is Emmanuel, he's with us. He's with each person walking through whatever struggle, whatever grief, whatever sorrow. And his desire is to draw us all to wholeness. We're broken. We fall apart. We mess up. And God says, come. Come to me. And John here is just preparing the way. He says, I'll baptize you with water. He's proclaimed this, this repentance. And he has all these people coming to him, confessing their sins. And then he baptizes them with water. Baptizing them with water to wash them clean. That was the ritual. If you wanted to become a Jew, you had to be baptized in water. You had to be washed clean. But now John is saying to all people, you must come and confess your sins. Be washed clean. But there's going to be one coming after me. So John here is the messenger, and Jesus is the message. And Jesus is going to bring the Holy Spirit, something far more powerful, God with us. So that now the Holy Spirit can live within us. God lives within us. God calls <coughs> us to love and to perfection and to holiness. And God heals up our broken hearts. God heals our wounds. It's not always instantaneous. It's not always the way that we want it to happen. Sometimes it's not, but that doesn't mean that God isn't pursuing you with abandon. Pursuing you with his love. So here, John has been called as the messenger. And, I, and in the story about the Chinese girl, the professor was the messenger, even though an unbeliever. And what about Jonah? Do you remember talking about Jonah, the man who was a prophet and sent with a message, but certainly did not want to go to Nineveh and begrudgingly shared the story eventually? eventually shared that they needed to change their ways. God can use anyone if he wants to. But God desires our heart and our wholeness to share the good news. God desires believers to rise up and share the story. Because Christ is coming again. He's going to come again and he wants us to be ready. He's going to come again and he wants to Curtis, he wants to pick us all up, swoop us all up. I just picture like a stork carrying a cloth, you know, and he's got a baby in it. Like we're all st stuck in this 
fly when we're going to heaven. I mean, that's a very elementary picture, but can you see it? Can you see Jesus just wrapping his arms around you and bringing, him home, bringing you home? He wants you to be ready. He wants you to come to him with your hurts, with your struggles, with your pain, and with even your sins and the places where you miss the mark because, man, he chases you. He desires to, he's already forgiven you. Before you were even born, he forgave you. And he wants you to know that forgiveness. He wants you to forgive yourself. And he wants to see you become a messenger. Many of you are. And we share that message both, both verbally by truly sharing the gospel, exactly what Jesus has done. We share it by sharing testimony of how God's brought peace that is unspeakable into our life. By how God has brought people to share in our life by um, meeting us in community by having a friend to share with, to bounce something off of. Through service, through offering clothes and things to the Agape Center or the families that need them. God, we share the gospel in many ways. But the word says that Jesus won't come again until everyone has had an opportunity to receive the gospel message. So everyone has had an opportunity. Now that opportunity comes in so many ways. Even Jesus can show up in dreams and visions. Even the rocks can cry out the glory of God as you sit in nature and recognize that. But God desires us to be messengers, just as we've had messengers in our life of this good news as he's preparing the way. So, would you pray with me? Most holy God, I thank you that you have sent messengers into our lives, <coughs> that you have love and grace and truth, and peace, and joy to offer. I thank you for the way you pursue us with the many people in our surroundings. I thank you for how you draw us close to you, how you heal our broken hearts, and mend the situations around us. I thank you, Lord, even for your righteous anger and the justice that comes about when needed. Lord, I, I thank you for the healing and redemption that you offer. And God, I ask that you raise us up to be the messengers that you desire for us to be as we seek after you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. What a beautiful choir of angels I have behind me. What a gift we have here to worship the Lord. Remember, that God has sent many messengers in your life. Pay attention to the ones that are from God, from the Holy Spirit. Pay attention to the ones that you know are truth. That's my challenge for you today. If anyone is in need of prayer, I would love to pray with you. I'd be honored to pray with you. I'll be over here. Now you can also reach out to me throughout the week. With that, go in the love of God, the joy of God, the peace of God that goes beyond understanding. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.